Welcome to the Contracting Officer Podcast. It's not just for contracting officers. If you work anywhere in the government acquisition world, this podcast is for you. Our topic today is a common source selection process called Low Price Technically Acceptable, or LPTA. This episode is brought to you by Skyway Acquisition. If your organization is interested in training from a team of former contracting officers, go to askskyway.com and learn about how Skyway helps both government and industry teams with the acquisition and contract execution process. Okay, let's get started and learn about LPTA. I wrote a chapter in my in my book about why I like LPTA. It was when I was a contracting officer. Simply put, it's because all things being equal, it, it's the easiest differentiator. I mean, price is the easiest way to, to compare things. I told the story on how I, I used LPTA and kind of a modified two-step sealed bid approach that involved lowest price. But I was buying a Ford Expedition. I mean, in that case, but not in most cases, but in that case, LPTA made sense because I was buying – it's literally a commodity. There are you know 50 dealers within Tampa Bay or within an hour drive of my house that can sell this thing. But price is is the decider in this case, but only when all things are equal and rarely are all things equal unless you're literally buying something like a Ford Expedition that Ford makes it and then sells it through lots of dealers. So in that case, it made sense. And I get a lot of static from people about like, oh, yeah, but LPTA, you said in your book was good. In that scenario, it was. In most things that you buy, there are so many variables that go into the decision making of why you choose what you choose that getting it down to just price is is very difficult when you're thinking low price a lot of times you might think of of Walmart and I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about Walmart I'm just saying that they own that low price market if you are looking to buy commodities things that you can buy in lots of other places it's very possible that Walmart has the lowest price for for the same things. And that's a story of scale and and market power that we won't get into here. When the transaction is more complex, when you're buying something more complex, not commodities, you may not end up going to Walmart to make your purchase. Yeah, and the more complex that things get, sometimes we can get overwhelmed. And given that price is the easier thing to, to decide on, Sometimes we throw up our hands and say, okay, well, let's just go with lowest price. Even though there are lots of variables that go into that price. And again, that's, that's why this stuff is hard. It's human nature. Before we get into human nature, let's stop and say thanks. Well, my human nature is to say, is to say thank you to people. I want to say thanks this week to Darlene Lagarde. She's a contracts manager at Raytheon out in Los Angeles, in the Los Angeles area. Darlene has been liking and sharing our content, our podcast content on LinkedIn. And the best way for people to find our stuff is for people to like and share it. So thanks for doing that, Darlene. Thanks, Darlene. Today we're talking about LPTA, Lowest Priced Technically Acceptable. And this is on the best value continuum of buying approaches, source selection approaches that the government uses. At one end is the trade-off approach, so all the way on one side is we're going to look at every possible element of what we're going to buy and trade everything off, a little bit more here, a little bit less there, including price. And then we're going to come to a decision on what the best value for us is. On the other end, the far other end of that continuum is low price technically acceptable, where we're going to snap a line. If it can do these three things, it's technically acceptable. And whichever one can do these three things and has the lowest price is the one we're going to select. And, you know, it's not three. I was just making an example there. Uh. <laughs> three is always the perfect number. Right? <laughs> and in between those two extremes on the, on the best value continuum is a sea of opportunity. You can have certain elements that are LPTA and you can have all parts that are traded off. Only certain parts are traded off. There's lots of opportunity between those two, but those are the two extremes. You can find LPTA in the FAR at 15.101-2A where it says... LPTA source selection process is appropriate when best value is expected to result from the selection of the technically acceptable proposal with the lowest evaluated price. So that's pretty easy to understand. There's this best value continuum where you look at everything in the world, but in less complex acquisitions, if you can determine 
that we really don't need to trade off all these variables because they're all just about the same. So low price is really all we need to look at. Then you can skip all that time and energy that it takes to do all these trade offs and get to a best value and just look at price. And the next paragraph, which is 15101-2B, says, when using the lowest price technically acceptable process, the following four items apply. First, past performance can be ignored. If the contracting officer documents a file that, in, in their judgment, past performance isn't going to provide any value in the evaluation, you don't have to include it. We did episode 124 about past performance being a bridge to the next contract. So that's a big question is if if something is such a commodity that you don't care about past performance, then LPTA applies. That's a big statement. So then past performance isn't a bridge to anywhere. Exactly. <laughs> it's a bridge to nowhere. That's a, it's a joke yeah. in there. So no past performance. Second, trade-offs are not permitted. This is where, again, you snap the line. Here's my technically acceptable line. You can't say, uh, wow, that's a little bit above the line. Uh, that's a little bit more. That's, I, w I really want that. Nope, too late. Too late. No trade-offs allowed. And the I really want that, that's the dangerous place because a customer, I've seen this happen before, one of our team members, Steve, but he's done these in the past and this is why he stopped doing them, is that the customer says, oh, but I want that. And he's like, it's above the line. We can't get that or we're going to get a protest. And then the customer is unhappy. So it's another slippery slope element of the LPTA. That leads us right to the third piece of this. Proposals are evaluated for acceptability, but not ranked using the non-cost slash price factors. It's a pass-fail. We need a car that has a top speed of 60 miles an hour. If your car goes 65 and costs $1 more than a car that goes 60, they're going to select the car that goes 60. And there might be, like you're saying, there might be people that say, ooh, I'd really like to go 65. But you can't get any credit for it in a low-cost, technically acceptable competition. Even if there are other intelligent reasons or things that you didn't think of that make that 65-mile-per-hour car better because they weren't conditions you can trade off, for example, maybe it's a Maybe it's lighter or has a better color or it's more streamlined or it has more comfortable seats or something, right? You can't consider any of those, which again, this is why the customers like LPTA until they get to the finish line and go, oh crap, I can't have that one. Nope. Right. You have to define technically acceptable in advance. You don't get to look at all of the offers and then decide which one is the most technically acceptable. You have to know that up front. And that, and that is hard to do. The last piece that the FAR helps you with here, it says exchanges may occur. And we actually don't have an episode about exchanges yet. <laughs> but, but in short, that's, it's, it's one step short of discussions. You're clarifying information back and forth about your proposal is the simplest way to put that. Right. If but the we'll government do doesn't understand something about why you would be technically acceptable or not, they can ask some simple questions without going too far to clarify whether or not you're above that line. To explain this a little more, let's bring this into our personal lives. If it's midnight and you're driving home from somewhere and you're starving because you haven't eaten all day, you might choose to feed yourself using the lowest priced, technically acceptable methodology. I don't want to imply that I'm saying anything bad about any companies or corporations here, but you might choose Taco Bell. It's open at midnight, it's super low priced, and it technically it qualifies as food. <laughs> might not be the most nutritious food, but it qualifies. If your technically acceptable line is must be edible, well, there you are. Although some people would not even call Taco Bell edible. I, I, get, I, I don't want to get into that. On the other side of this, if you were going to propose to your potential spouse or go out to an anniversary dinner, maybe LPTA isn't the way to go. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that would go over real well at Taco Bell. Or, or like we were talking about before, Maybe your definition of technically acceptable becomes much more complex than the Taco Bell example, which, you know, must be food. If it's a special dinner, I'm thinking that your your definition of technically acceptable should be a little bit higher than Taco Bell. Right. Just saying. Right. Maybe you get to the point of must have tablecloths, must have waiters, valet parking. There has to be a guy in the corner playing piano to give it a little ambiance. 
you could run an internal LPTA competition between fancy restaurants uh, it, but just by checking boxes and then saying, all right, I've looked at the menu and this would be the lowest price for my proposal dinner. It's more likely that you're not going to use LPTA when it gets complex like that. You're going to use more of a trade-off methodology where you say, wow, the place with the guy playing piano in the corner is way expensive compared to this other place that has all my other requirements, but no piano guy. So I'm going to trade off piano guy to save some money here. And I think the proposal will still go well. And you're likely to ask for a referral. You may have heard of these places to go to this, to do this proposal dinner at places that have history, that they have some past performance. And again, if you're doing pure LPTA, it says you don't have to look at past performance. So imagine say, we got some guy that plays piano. Yeah, he's you know, 17 year old playing chopsticks. He's playing piano, he meets <laughs> the definition. So just you know, be careful. Right, with Taco Bell, you don't necessarily need the past performance of one Taco Bell versus another Taco Bell, they're all going to be about the same. They should be, yeah. For fancy restaurants, it could be wildly different. You could accidentally stumble into the, one of those piano bars with the dueling pianos where everybody's drunk and yelling the whole time. Might not be what you expected. <laughs> you know what, though? When you propose there, it's going to be an event. Just saying. <laughs> it is. We already talked about my car, how I bought my expedition through using the LPTA. But understand that there was still the definition of technically acceptable. It was easily definable. It was priced, but it also had to have certain features. It had to you know, be big enough, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, if it were just this pure concept of I need transportation to get me from A to B, if everybody just needed that, then we would all just buy Toyota Corollas. They're low cost, they're highly efficient, and they're really easy to buy. Yeah. But it's usually not just price. It's price and something else. And that something else is technically acceptable. And unless you can clearly define that, it can be really hard to pull off an LPTA. We talked about LPTA in an earlier episode about the best value continuum. And the examples we used are daycare services. If you were going to hire someone to watch your children while you're at work, do you really want the least expensive? Are you going to use lowest price as the sole criteria for choosing a daycare provider? I would say probably not. You're probably going to trade off. Well, this one is close to my house. It's on my commute. This one has all kinds of certifications that other ones don't have. Every kid that's come out of this daycare has become a junior Einstein. Maybe those are good things that, that help you choose. And, and you're going to get references. You're going to look at their past performance. Exactly. Where are my coworkers? Where are their kids going? And, and yes, price is always a factor. Because if, if price were no option, somebody would come in a private limousine and get your kid every morning. But that's not a case for most people. So you, you still have this price factor in there, but you got to know where in the market are you. The other example we use is buying a stroller. So you're, you're just going to push your kids around, you know, little contraption with wheels. Do you want the least expensive stroller? Maybe you do. But maybe you want something that is a little safer, a little more durable. When my wife and I first my first had kids and you go into the to, was it Babies R Us or whatever it is, and, and you're looking at the, the options that are available, you had no idea, right? Well, the, the extreme versions of on one end, you've got with the umbrella stroller that has no storage, weighs like a pound, you know, whatever. And then you've got like the Cadillac. Well, the funny thing is the coolest Cadillac. We were at Disney last weekend and we're just walking through one of the resorts and we see like this. It literally looked like a like a baby version of a Cinderella carriage. It was, you know, it was all ornate and gorgeous. And my, my daughter's like, oh, that's really cool. And my wife says, yeah, but there's nowhere to store anything. Her, her definition of LPTA was very different than my daughter. So just just be aware <laughs> that, that that that's why buying a stroller is such a great example, because the the strata of options is kind of mind altering. Yeah. And that's an interesting way to think of LPTA, because I guarantee you that that the the Cinderella carriage stroller was not the lowest price. But exactly, it's custom. It's it's where it's the technical acceptability, right? Your wife's definition was must have lots of storage to carry all the stuff. Your daughter's might have been needs to look really cool like a carriage. And exactly. th the family that bought that, I don't know if they did trade off or LPTA, but but obviously their technically acceptable criteria were different. That's the trick to LPTA. It's not just about lowest price for anything that, that roughly meets the description. It's defining what is technically acceptable. The ultimate LPTA joke goes back to the, the rockets we used to launch people to the moon. 
And the old joke is you got guys sitting on the launch pad in the capsule ready to launch, thinking about the fact that they're about to be thrust into the atmosphere and to the moon on a rocket built by the lowest bidder. And I'm pretty sure that's not how the government chose to, to, to buy those rockets. But it's interesting to think of, right? That's a situation where you might not want to have to specify technical acceptability on all those parameters and just choose the lowest price. You might want to trade a few things off. Yeah, and that concept has entered the lore of movies where you'll, you'll hear that in movies and say, oh, yeah, like in, the, in a space movie, oh, yeah, we're on the, the rocket made by the lowest bidder. And if you're in this environment, you know that's not true. But that's the mindset. That's, that's, that's how the LPTA mindset gets spread. Let's pause here and link this to the acquisition and execution time zones. If we're talking source selection strategy, what acquisition strategy should you use to acquire whatever you need to buy? This happens in the acquisition time zones during the market research zone. This is when you've built your requirements and now you're trying to figure out what's the most efficient way to buy them. You're dealing with the ramifications of that decision in the RFP zone and the source selection zone, but market research zone is where the decision should be made. In the execution time zones, this lands in the recompete zone where if the government is going to buy more of whatever they bought last time, they're trying to decide, have we moved to the point where this is a commodity and LPTA is all we need to get the results that we're looking for? And, and even if the, the items you're buying have become commoditized to the point where you could buy them LPTA, sometimes we have to be careful. We're not slipping into calling an LPTA buy just because all of the pieces that we're buying are LPTA Remember that there's a, an organization of all those pieces. Choosing the right acquisition tools to buy what you need is very important. Price matters, but it's rarely the only thing that matters. At price, it's a competitive advantage, having a lower price. But sometimes it's the only competitive advantage, if, if you're Walmart. But in reality, a lot of times it's not. We help the customer educate the government user on, yes, these things that we're buying individually, lowest price is the way to get them. But putting them all together into a system that the military user can benefit from, that process is not LPTA. We have one of our customers educate the government on the difference between those two things. And the government moved off of LPTA and to a strategy that that benefited your customer in that case? Yes, and it ended up effectively being almost like a two-step sealed bid where there were pieces of it that were still LPTA. But understanding and applying those pieces in a way that, you know, you put the, how do you put the puzzle together? I can buy you all the pieces of the puzzle, but it's to put them together. That's the skill that the contractor brought, and that can't be bought LPTA. But in this case, we convinced the government to break them into two pieces and evaluate them differently. And LPTA can be a lot more efficient than it is actually effective. Uh, in my car story, when I was buying a, 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 you know, a Ford Expedition, it was very efficient because I was buying a new car. But when I'm buying a used car... LPTA is not an effective strategy. It can be massively frustrating because you're, you're comparing all these different elements of a used car, like mileage and color and wear and tear and all these things that are subjective. Yeah, that makes complete sense. If you're buying a new car, you're comparing exactly the same thing, buying it from different sources. It's going to be this model year with these features and how much does it cost? And it's really easy to compare exactly this from this from this and choose the lowest price. If you're buying a used car, that becomes so much more complicated because, like you said, might be the same model year, might have the same features. Even if it has the exact same miles or, or very close to the same mileage, those cars might have been treated differently or serviced differently, maintained differently over the years. There's a lot of things that you have to take into account. So just say I'm going to buy the least expensive car that I can find that is this model from this year is not a path to success. Remember in the, in the Three Deciders episode, in episode 118, we talked about the economic decider, the person who funds the purchase, the user, the person who uses it, and the contracting officer or, or the acquirer, the procurement person. Those are the three deciders in that episode. Well, they see LPTA very differently. The economic decider loves it because it's cheaper. The contracting officer or the procurement person probably loves it because it's faster, but the user probably hates it. And so we have to be careful, and, and depending on the circumstances, one of those three is going to be unhappy. But understanding in that, that car example, that used car, if I buy a used car quickly that's the lowest price and I give it to my teenage daughter, she's going to go, I don't like this. And it is easy to get it misunderstood. Again, defining what is technically acceptable is the key 
up front to all those people being happy. In my experience, that doesn't work out that way very often. Yeah, it's really hard. The government cares about this because it, it creates risk. I mean, what happens if someone can just buy in at the lowest price with, with no past performance, which we talked about? That, that creates risk. Some questions to consider, you know, I, and I wish I had seen these more clearly when I was a contracting officer, is LPTA may apply if any vendor can do this, if anybody, going back to my Ford Expedition, if I have to get this car serviced, I can go to any Ford dealer, right? Also, do, do we really care about past performance? If, if it's a commercial item, then it might be easy to do via LPTA. In services, this is pretty unlikely. Getting services through LPTA, which in short, think about, you want to look at past performance. It's really hard to compare people as a commodity, <laughs> just saying. We've talked about that in a, many episodes. The government's trying to buy, for instance, engineering support services. And they need people that have top secret clearances. So what's going to happen if you choose to do that in an LPTA manner? Do you want the least expensive engineers that, that have clearances available? Maybe not. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a whole different episode about LPTA services. That'll be a fun one. Another question to ask is, can you live with the risk? Can your user live with the risk of, of someone buying in? Because if past performance isn't a reference and lowest price is all that matters, if they met that low, po low bar and then you give them a contract, is your customer going to be happy? What's the risk of them not being happy, right? And here's what I hadn't considered when I was a contracting officer. Who's actually going to bid? How many companies aren't even interested in bidding if it's LPTA? I mean, somebody will bid, right? Right. If you know that Walmart has the lowest prices and you can't sell it for that low, you might not even compete. And, and more insidiously, as a contracting officer, I don't know they made that decision. So there's an entire segment of offers who I never even hear from because they all just walked away and I didn't even know it. From the industry side, the race to the bottom from a price perspective is generally not profitable or sustainable. Scale is your only hope. If you're not Walmart or Amazon or Apple, you can't even compete. And this goes back to my point about it's, it's called customer selectivity. It's what you were talking about from the government side. If my company can't win a low price shootout, I won't even bother to bid. So if you're on the government side and you want a, a wide variety of choices and you say, we're doing this LPTA, you may not get a lot of choices. You may only get one choice and the, the, the company that can, that is selling at scale, but selling something that might not be exactly what you need. And is it going to be the best company to do it? Yeah. It goes back to the, the, the client selectivity thing is that a lot of customers, it's Skyway included. If somebody is just shopping on price, we're not the cheapest company out there. I won't even bother entertaining them because I know that I'm not going to make them happy. I'll send them to somebody else whose who's focus is price. You mentioned buying in before. I should explain what that is. Some companies may consider LPTA as a way to buy in. You, you bid at a low price, a lower price than you can actually make any profit on in order to win. And then you hope that you're going to get well later through engineering change proposals or additional quantities. Not a great strategy, but unfortunately it is used. Some companies look LPTA as, hey, our only way to win this is to go low on price. And then they make it a nightmare later to manage the program because they're trying to build in more ways to make money later. Other companies look at LPTA and say, oh, that's a trap. That just increases the chances that I might fail to deliver and then I'm going to have poor past performance that haunts me in future competition, right? You look at it and say, I could bid the lowest price possible, but that's not how I want to do business. Some people in the industry consider LPTA to be a lazy acquisition strategy. And it's a harsh way to say it, but again, I didn't see that as a CO. That's the perception of LPTA from the industry viewpoint is it's, we don't want to do all the work to do all the trade-offs, so we're just going to pick the lowest price. Yeah, and that, that sends a message, and it might not be the message that you want to send. Sometimes the government says they're going to do best value, but it, it becomes a de facto LPTA when they get to the evaluation. They call it a best value or a trade-off, but low price wins every time. Like we were talking about, it does take more work on the government's part to do a true best value trade-off, and it takes more documentation. 
this is where industry needs to be able to talk to government to help them understand what value you get by paying a little more so the government can document it, defend it, and award to something higher than the lowest price. Lowest price is an easy thing to justify. All those trade-offs take more work. Skyway actually helps our customers explain that very concept to their government customers. But again, that's a topic for another day. Yeah, you mentioned that before. You actually talked a government customer off the LPTA ledge and into a different strategy that actually benefited your customer. And it made sense because portions of their requirement were still LPTA, which LPTA does make sense in certain scenarios. We're not saying it never applies, just it applies sparingly. <laughs> All right, Kevin, let's wrap this up. On the government side, consider which vendors you're driving away with an LPTA. I, I didn't see that as a CO. Um, the fact that the FAR expects past performance to not be a factor in LPTA is, it, it shows you just how homogenized those requirements are. On the industry side, assume the government's not lazy. I, I didn't realize how ineffective it was to use LPTA in certain circumstances. I mean, I thought it was a great model. It was faster, it was more efficient, and I always got competitors, who, and, then, and that seemed to work. So LPTA works as far as efficiency. Yes, you could award fast, low price, done. But that doesn't bring in the results to the users, the ultimate users of that, whatever you bought later. So it's funny, yeah, as a contracting officer, I always want to get that crank turned and get through things faster because I have more things to buy than I have time to buy. I'll wrap up by just cautioning. You get what you pay for. If you want the lowest price, technically acceptable, that's what you'll get. You don't get to decide later that, oh, well, I want, I want it to go 65 miles an hour instead of 60. You don't get a little more. You get the lowest. There are many things that are very appropriate for LPTA, like we've been discussing. But would you choose LPTA to, to buy a parachute? If you're going to jump out of a plane and trust your life to this, do you want the one that was built by the lowest bidder and all that comes with that? Not sure. All right. I'll talk to you later, Kevin. See you, Paul. All right, that's it for this episode. If you need help talking to your government customer about acquisition strategies, Skyway Acquisition can help. Visit askskyway.com to learn how. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yeah.